Hello everyone, my name is Alex, and I'm sick today, so bear with me, please. And I'm Steph, and I am pretty hungry, not going to lie to you. You're listening to another episode of Chat Chew Review. Today we're going to talk about the impossible meat craze, so let's jump right in. So, impossible meat. We've heard a lot about this in the media lately, especially because Burger King recently had their own version of the Impossible Whopper come out, I want to say in the fall of last year, which, spoiler alert, we're trying today, as you can see from the fries, but that'll be coming a little bit later. But first, I wanted to kind of talk about our initial thoughts of the impossible meat craze, because I think it's been really prevalent right now. So, Steph, tell me what you think. Impossible meat. Um, I have obviously never tried it before. I think that we are both trying it for the first time today, a little bit later. Um, but I am curious to see what it tastes like. I don't know how I feel exactly about like the environmental impacts and stuff like that. Um, which I guess we can get into, Mm -hmm. but um, I'm interested to see if it tastes similar to regular meat. What do you think? I'm a little bit nervous. I guess anything that is plant-based kind of, not scares me, but I'm kind of Um, anti-vegan. I do enjoy my meat products or animal products in general. So I think with the Impossible Burger particularly, a lot of stuff that I've seen has said, oh, it's healthier, it's better for you, it's sustainable, better for the environment, and I don't know that all of those things are true. Some of them may be true, but I'm a little bit nervous. I I don't know how I feel about plants acting like they're meat, Mm -hmm. but I'm still curious to see. We'll give it a shot today. I don't think that at the end of the day, I would probably choose impossible meat or meatless meat over regular meat. I think that that would be cool to maybe have like a meatless Monday kind of dinner or something where it's a part of your diet just because it's interesting and innovative. Mm -hmm. But I don't necessarily think that I would completely replace that. Right. Just because I do enjoy meat. I kind of feel the same way. I'm I'm open to eating less meat. I think for me particularly, when it comes to diet, I think everything in moderation, including meat. So I'm down for a meatless Monday or meatless meals in general. I just don't know how I feel about products like the Impossible Burger saying that they're so close to meat. I just, I think... I'd rather eat, like, whole foods that don't pretend to be something else, Mm -hmm. I guess. But I kind of wanted to talk about what exactly is in an Impossible Burger and, like, the nutrition facts, how it stacks up against regular beef, because that's what the Impossible Burger is trying to be. Mm -hmm. So first, I found a couple articles that had some really good information that I didn't know. So one of them is Business Insider. They, they told, told you exactly what is in the possible, Impossible Burger. And it says that in total there are 21 ingredients that make up the Impossible Burger, which I think is, I mean, a lot. Like when you're mm-hmm. eating a burger, you know it's ground beef. But an Impossible Burger is made up of 21 things. And in this article, it reads that the top five ingredients of an Impossible Burger are water, Soy protein concentrate, coconut oil, sunflower oil, and natural flavors. So, I mean, that kind of furthers my opinion of, I don't know that it's better for me that it has all these oils in it and I'm getting a soy protein concentrate. And natural flavors. And natural flavors. Whatever that is. <laughs> do we Do we know what natural flavors are? Like, is that just kind of everything extra that they've combined into what's called natural flavors or what does that even mean? I'm not exactly sure. It doesn't say. It literally just says natural flavors. Mm -hmm. So I think it must be whatever it is that's supposed to make it taste just like beef. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, the real test will be the taste test. So 
I'm excited to see what that will look like. And then I found another article that kind of talked about the nutrition differences between regular ground beef and the Impossible Burger. And so this article came from CNET. It says 100 grams of lean ground beef contains 217 calories, 12 grams of fat, 90 milligrams cholesterol, 70 milligrams sodium, zero carbohydrates, zero grams fiber, and 26 grams of protein. Now compared with the Impossible Burger patty, the Impossible Burger has 240 calories, so that's compared to 217. That's not a huge difference, Mm -hmm. but still, it's more calories. It's not necessarily healthier. I mean, Mm -hmm. for me, I generally count calories, so that's having something that's a higher calorie content than a regular ground beef patty. I would probably go for ground beef still. And then it has 14 grams of fat compared to 12 grams of fat of regular ground beef, which I think is a little bit surprising. I guess if you're... This only brought up the nutrition facts for lean ground beef. So I guess it'd be different. You know, the higher fat content there is in the beef, you probably have more fat content than the Impossible Patty, Burger Patty. This has zero grams of cholesterol, which is better than the 90 grams of cholesterol in the regular ground beef. So I think that's that's a good difference. But the Impossible Burger also has 370 milligrams of sodium, which is significantly different than 70 milligrams of sodium in regular ground beef. Mm -hmm. And I think I recently went to a nutrition seminar at work and they were talking about how we as Americans get way too much sodium in our diet. And they told us that the average that you're supposed to get on a daily basis is about 2,500 milligrams, but on average, Americans get about 4,000 milligrams of sodium a day. So that's one thing to consider. Apparently, sodium is a really good preservative, so I think that may be a reason why there's more sodium in the Impossible Burger. That's just me guessing, though. The Impossible Burger also has 9 grams of carbohydrates, more than the 0 grams that were in the original ground beef. It also has 3 grams of fiber, which compared to the 0 grams in your regular ground beef is a little bit better. But for me, it's not really that much more significant. Mm -hmm. And then the Impossible Burger also has 19 grams of protein. That's compared with 26 grams of protein in your ground beef burger. So it's still, it's not a huge difference, but I think in terms of what I personally have heard in terms of impossible meat patties, that they're healthier, they have the same amount of protein, it's not necessarily true. So what do you think? I, so I don't know, there's so many different perspectives to see this from. Mm -hmm. So somebody that chooses the vegetarian lifestyle or vegan lifestyle would that would be a really good alternative. My thing is, is whenever I was researching it on, I think it's impossible.com. It's like their website for impossible meat in general. Um, they spoke about their motto being that we're destructing the environment by eating animals. And so they want to eventually get everybody, I mean, in the whole world to eat a vegan lifestyle or a plant-based lifestyle to avoid, you know, disrupting the ecosystem of animals in general. I don't know how I feel about that necessarily. I feel like yeah. that's a bit of a stretch because it would take a lot of people to make that happen. I just think it's like it's a it, everybody should have good goals, but that's a right. very big goal. Um, so I don't know how I feel about it on that side, but I do enjoy or I do like that vegetarians have an option, vegans mm-hmm. have an option, um, or if you have to have that kind of diet for whatever, if you go to the doctor and your doctor yeah. tells you that you can't eat meat or what for whatever reason, they have you know, an option. Right. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, it is everybody's choice, obviously, at the end of the day to eat what they want. I have no problem with companies like Burger King or, as we'll get to, a lot of other companies now are bringing out Impossible Meat or some kind of plant-based alternative to their food because I think it's obvious that consumers are asking for products like this and I, again, it's it's everybody's personal choice. I'm not. I don't have anything against like mm-hmm. vegans, vegetarians, whatever, gluten free, whatever you want to call yourself. But I think for me, I regardless will still go for 
a meat option. Yes. This is all to say that today we are going to actually try an Impossible Burger. In late 2019, Burger King actually announced that they'd be launching an Impossible Whopper, so a counterpart to their original Whopper that looked and tasted exactly like an original Whopper. They did a whole media push. You probably saw the commercials where they had people taste testing the Impossible Whopper, and all the people in the commercial were like, oh my gosh, like it tastes exactly like a Whopper. And then the people told them, oh, it's all made of plants. And their reactions were like, huh? <laughs> you know, they weren't, they didn't know what to do. So I have kind of been biding my time as to wanting to try it. Like I wanted to try it, but as I said before, I'm a little bit apprehensive about it, I would say, just because. One, maybe I do like it. I don't know. We'll see. But if I if I don't, I'm kind of worried of like what it will taste like because I'm I don't know. I think it just worries me that it's made of plants. Like I don't know what that means. Yeah, I feel like I am more excited to see like what it actually tastes like in general. But like the commercials, like you said, they are all like this is a like this doesn't or this tastes exactly like me or. I can't tell the difference or like the Febreze commercials and stuff. (laughs) Yeah. But I'm tempted to see like what that even tastes like. Like, will it taste the same? Will it taste different? Will we be able to tell the difference? I'm just hoping that I don't, from what I have heard, it's supposed to taste like an actual Whopper. So that to me is promising. I'm wondering about the consistency Mm-hmm. From from what I have seen, it's supposed to taste and feel like an actual ground beef patty. So I guess we might as well just get to it. Mm-hmm. We're going to jump off camera real quick and grab our Impossible Whopper and our regular Whopper, and we're going to do a live taste test. So yeah. stay with us. Okay, so we are back, and we have our Whoppers. So on my right, this one is... The original Whopper, and on the left we have the Impossible Whopper. So, just first initial thoughts. Uh, I think you were saying this off camera, but the Impossible Whopper does the patty looks a little bit more thick than the regular Whopper. It's a little bit more flat. Mm-hmm. What I notice is that the Impossible Whopper has kind of more of a reddish tone to it. I don't know, that may just be me, but they look a little bit different. Nothing too drastic, though. I mean, I would say it looks pretty similar to, to the original ground beef patty. Yeah. If somebody gave me, like, just from looking, if somebody gave me the Impossible one, I probably wouldn't think twice about it. Yeah. It's because we're comparing yeah. that we feel that way, but probably, like, if you were to just get it, you would, I mean, not regarding taste, just looks, would think that it was a regular burger. I agree. Okay, so the plan is to try the original Whopper first and then see what we think. I haven't had a Whopper. I don't even know. I I can't remember the last time I've had a Whopper, but we're going to give our first thoughts and then we're going to move on to the original and Mm -hmm. see how it stacks up. All right. So I'm going to dive right in, ignore my eating noises but (laughs) we're doing original first (laughs) original first let's give this a go okay Hmm. it's not terrible tastes Tastes like like a burger tastes like a burger kind of tastes like a red robin burger i'm weirded out that there's not cheese on it yeah, that but, is a little weird. Maybe you have to ask for it. Like on the regular one, I would have thought that there was cheese. But Is there even cheese on the Impossible one? No. The weird thing is, is that the wrapper says with cheese on the Impossible burger, but there's no cheese in it. So, honestly. Probably just a fast food mistake. We've all been there and done <laughs> that. Okay. I mean, I think... I think I'm ready to try it. Yes. That just tasted like a regular burger yeah, without did. the cheese. It wasn't anything like crazy. Noteworthy. Nothing special. Okay, y'all. This is the moment. This is it. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> I 
I'm very surprised. I can taste an obvious difference, though. Still, I don't know. It tastes like it was cooked differently. Like, it almost tastes tastes like a regular burger, but, like, smoked instead or something. <laughs> like, you know, whenever you have a meat that you, like, eat regularly, but it's cooked a different way? Yeah. And the aftertaste is, like, still lingering. It tastes meaty <laughs> in a weird way, but it also kind of tastes nutty to me. I have a weird comparison. Okay. So... This, the Impossible Whopper, in my opinion, tastes exactly like, like, the ribs that you used to get in high school, like, through, like, the cheap lunch. You got ribs in high school? They, don't get excited. They weren't, like, <laughs> baby back ribs or nothing. They were, like, if you've ever had, like, a McRib from McDonald's. Oh. Like, that. I mean. Well, I'm going to take another bite, because I'm, yeah. like, I'm perplexed. I'm really, I really am. I don't know how I feel. It smells It smells like a school, like a school burger. The more I eat it, the more I don't like it. Like, I really don't know how I feel about it. I'm not trying to be dramatic or anything, but literally the more I eat it, and I don't know if it's just, I can't think of what it looks like, but yeah, it, it, it seems like a TV dinner type of patty. (laughs) <laughs> Why don't I just take off the entire That's exactly, patty. it tastes like like a TV dinner meat. Like, you know how the meat in TV dinners don't taste like yes. meat? They taste yes. like fake or like plastic or we used to, that's why I compared it to the meat in high school because we would always like laugh about how it was like fake meat. Yeah, it tastes, it, it kind of tastes and looks like what you would find in a meatloaf style TV dinner to me. Conspiracy and, theory. Major conspiracy theory. <laughs> but the ta- I don't know. I think I'm a little bit grossed out that the taste kind of just, like, lingers in your mouth. Like, it's a little bit too much, these natural flavors that they're putting in. Natural they're flavors. They're trying way too hard. Um, yeah, it does last in your mouth. Like, after the first bite of the regular one, I did not yeah. taste it. After that, again, like, I didn't have, like, a lingering aftertaste. That's why I just went for a fry because the taste. <laughs> I need to it cleanse was like, my mouth with the regular Whopper. The regular or the... The Impossible Burger just kind of, like, lingers, and it's, like, they want to force the flavor. Like, they Mm want to keep it in your mouth. Now trying the regular Whopper, the the consistency is a little bit different. The Impossible Whopper breaks off a little bit easier and kind of stays whole. You know how, like, when ground beef, you cook it, it almost has little... um, I don't know. It stays in, like, chunks. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. But, anyways, the consistency is a little bit different, in my opinion. The Impossible Whopper is a little bit more spongy. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, my mind is playing games with me because I almost feel like they do taste very similar, though. Like, there's a difference, and I obviously, like, I do prefer the regular one better. Yeah, yeah. But I'm telling you, like, I genuinely think that if somebody, like, if I were to, like, say, hey, go to Burger King and get me a burger, and they brought this back, I probably would not think twice about it. I really think that. I probably wouldn't either. And I'd, I'd be curious what I would have thought if, like, you brought me the Impossible Whopper and we're just like, here, this is a regular Whopper. Mm-hmm. But I feel like the taste of the patty still would have been off to me. Like, if somebody brought me an Impossible Whopper... And just said, here, this is what Burger King's Whopper tastes like. I probably wouldn't rank it very high in terms of other fast food burgers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. As I'm examining it, it does look like the Impossible Whopper, like the patty itself, almost looks like a sausage patty. Like where it's very crispy, like on the outsides with like the fake grill marks. But then like on the bottom, it's like has no... Like a big piece of bologna or something. It's kind of bendy, too. Yeah. Like, it doesn't break. I must say, though, like, if you are living a vegetarian lifestyle or a vegan lifestyle and you just really miss, like, the taste of, like, a fast food burger, this is a good option. At the end of the day. Like, as meat eaters, we probably do prefer Mm -hmm. the regular burger just because the taste and we can tell, like, the difference. And if we don't have to eat this way under that dietary restriction, we don't want to. 
but say like you are a vegan, like I said, a vegetarian, this is a good option. I would say so. I agree. It's pretty close. It is pretty close. Like I have to admit, honestly, I'm not super grossed out by the taste. It's just not what I expect in like a burger. I think it's a little, it's trying a little bit too hard. But yeah, I mean, if you are looking for a burger, by all means, go and try the Impossible Whopper at Burger King. I think it's a pretty close alternative. Or for somebody who may be newly transitioning to a vegetarian lifestyle, it's maybe the burger for you. Yeah, for sure. I feel like in general, Burger King, after because I don't think I've ever tried a Whopper in general before, um, I would not prefer this burger over, like, say, a McDonald's or a Wendy's even. Mm -hmm. It's just probably not my favorite just overall. But, um, I mean, it's. I think it's good. It's I all agree. Right. I mean, I, in terms of if my mind has changed about Burger King, I do like that they have more options, like we said before. I think that's great. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know that Burger King ranks super high in my chain of fast food yeah. joints that I like to go to. Yeah. There's something about a McDonald's cheeseburger... I, I don't know what it is. It's probably the amount of, like, it's like that sweet bun or something that, I don't know. But like, the patties are really small. Like, the yeah. way that it just, like, has a certain flavor. Like, I feel like if we were to do, like, a blind taste test of, like, all the burgers and then, like, a McDonald's burger, it just has that specific taste. But we're getting off track. <laughs> we're talking we're about Burger, burger King, King today, okay? <laughs> so, I think final decision, it's pretty clear. Like, I'm still going to stick with the original Whopper, but I was pleasantly surprised. I mean, it may not have seemed like I was pleasantly surprised, but I was pleasantly surprised that I wasn't, you know, throwing up from the taste of the Impossible Whopper. Mm -hmm. But I probably wouldn't go for it again. Like, it hasn't changed my mind to now just transition to Impossible Meat. Yeah. Do you think that that's more of the flavor that's making you think that way or the fact that you don't prefer to eat impossible meat anyways. Like, you would, you don't have a reason to. I don't to. know. I'm battling that, battling with that in my mind. Like, I can't tell if it's just my idea of, oh, this is an impossible burger, so I don't think I'm going to like it. Mm -hmm. It's not that I didn't really like it. The flavor was just a little bit much, and I think it's a little, it's, it shows that they're putting added flavors in it to make it taste more like meat. But, yeah, I'm kind of grappling with that in my own head of, like, is it just because I know it's an Impossible Whopper that I'm not liking it as much? Mm -hmm. I think it's also the texture, too. Like, there is a textural difference between the two. And I think I'm just used to the texture of ground beef more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, overall, final feelings. Obviously, we like this better, but yeah. if you absolutely had to eat the Whopper, but you were under dietary restriction or choosing a different lifestyle, go for the Impossible Burger because it's kind of similar, but there bad. is a difference. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't like that difference. <laughs> okay, so now that we're done with our live taste test, we're going to kind of give a little bit more of the tea, I would say. So before we even thought about doing this episode, I was thinking about the Impossible Burger and the Impossible Whopper and the Whopper in general, and I had a thought of, do they cook it on the same grill or flat top, or do they, do they reserve a space of the grill for the Impossible Whopper? Because I think a common criticism I hear from people who are vegan are like I don't want my burger cooked in the same oils that a regular burger is cooked in mm -hmm. and I just I don't know so do you think that they cook it on the same flat top I mean I would assume so um I don't know if you've had any like fast food background at all I did work at a fast food chain that I won't name um and I mean there's only one flat top grill or there I mean they I don't assume that they have like a separate one yeah um and then they're teenagers working there or whatever or however old you are but I'm sure that they're not making it a point to like keep it separate they're probably not thinking that way yeah um so yeah I would assume that it's on the same flat top I mean it kind of goes back to our last episode where we were talking about the Starbucks 
um, the steamer where you mm-hmm. steam the milk and you have all different kinds of milks that you're working with. I don't know. I feel like that would be a problem. If, if I were vegan or vegetarian, then I wouldn't want my products cooked in the same... I mean, if it was sanitized, I guess that'd be okay. But how can you guarantee, I guess? And maybe you can't. Maybe maybe that's why people just don't... I don't know. If I were a vegan or vegetarian, I probably wouldn't go to a fast food and order like an Impossible Whopper because mm-hmm. I would be worried that it was cooked on the same grill. Yeah, that goes along with kind of not knowing how your food's prepared in general. Yeah. Like even if it's <laughs> not so meatless... True. Somebody could, like, hock a loogie in your burger or, I mean, you, like, never know when somebody else is making your food, like, what's actually happening. So I wonder if that's just kind of what happens whenever you order. I mean, any restaurant or any fast food, you just kind of, like, take your chance. Um, So maybe just cook your own Impossible Meat at home. Which they do have Impossible Burger. I mean, I saw them at Target yesterday when we were preparing for this episode. Mm -hmm. But... They the impossible meat does seem a little bit more expensive, which may be just another reason why I would opt for regular beef. But I'm not sure. I think they're trying to make it more accessible, but if it is truly made of plants, I would I mean this is just an assumption, but I would assume that it'd be cheaper. Mm-hmm. But I, I it could be because that it, it takes more time and energy and resources to create a smaller amount of impossible burger meat. Mm -hmm. But then it makes you think, is it so genetically engineered and all this science goes behind it to where obviously they have to pay all the people to where they make it more expensive? And then you're thinking, like, there's too much going into what I'm eating right now. It's all genetically modified. Like, I'll just opt for regular meat. Yeah. That goes along with diets, too. That's kind of how I feel. Like, I feel like if you have to put so many products into making an impossible meat tastes like a burger I'm just gonna eat a burger because I know I know that it's just ground beef Mm -hmm. whereas with the impossible burger I think that's my main point of contention is with these plant-based meats it's not truly clear what is going into my food I would rather just eat if it's made of plants I would rather just eat like a bunch of vegetables or Mm -hmm. fruit I don't want to be completely naive either to the fact that the regular ground beef that we're accustomed to is not genetically modified (laughs) either. Like, I'm not throwing, like, that's not going out the window. Like, we could be being joked around. (laughs) Yeah, bamboozled with the regular meat by all means. I mean, it's not like we're getting, like, right off the cow, like, pure ground beef as much as the package says so. Right. We don't know what the government's up to. (laughs) This turns into a conspiracy theory. Hey, what's up, you guys? <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm just not sold on it, I guess. And I don't know what it's going to take to sell me on this. Maybe it just takes a, a larger movement. I mean, when I went to Target yesterday, I, I went to the frozen food section, and impossible meat or plant-based meats, vegetarian items, are completely taking over the store. And... It's, it's good to see. I, I love the amount of options that are available for people. But I don't think the movement is there yet. And I don't think that they're going to get everybody. And before you me. leave your, your part of the problem comments, <laughs> just keep to yourself. Because in all honesty, and this kind of goes with a lot of things, and just keep an open mind when I say this, unless everybody gets on board or most people get on board... Yeah. Something as big as the movement as they're wanting to make with this impossible meat is not going to happen unless people feel the urgency to do so. Right. Yep, I agree. And I don't think that everybody has that urgency. I think I think the impossible burger is one of those things where they're trying to test the waters and see how people will react to it. But I don't think to me it seems like a fad product. It seems like they brought this out and it caused a little bit of hype for a minute uh, for people to try it but I don't necessarily think that it's going to be the game changer that makes everybody go Mm plant-based I mean we'll see fast forward to 20 (laughs) years from now you never know when we have to eat impossible whoppers but for now pick your pick Pick your your poison poison. (laughs) we love
love a in sync moment. Sinking sisters. <laughs> so I actually looked up, you know, if Burger King does cook the Impossible Whopper on the same grill or flat top or whatever they use. And somebody is actually suing them. Like, they're in the midst of a lawsuit right now. A man in Florida actually, let me pull up the article. It says it was from CNN. And a man in Florida is suing Burger King because the meatless Impossible Whopper is cooked on the same grill as meat products, the lawsuit alleges. So, again, you can't fully trust that they're cooking your products correctly. Or that yeah. or that if you have some kind of dietary restriction, that every company is going to be aware of that or treat it like it should be treated, I guess. Mm -hmm. But we'll have to see how this lawsuit pans out. I don't know. I'm assuming they'll probably settle, but that's just me making assumptions. We'll have to keep updated on the lawsuit. (laughs) It's not completed yet, so we'll see. Well, it also says in this article that although the burger chain advertises its vegan option is meat-free, it is contaminated by meat byproduct because it's cooked on the same grill as the meat products. And I don't know that Burger King necessarily promoted it as vegan. I mean, I understand, yes, they promote it as it's plant-based, but to me, when I see Impossible Meat, it's more so it's more so marketed as sustainable rather than vegan, I guess. Because even I mean, even the Impossible Burger that we had, it still had mayonnaise on it. Mm-hmm. Like there are still things that aren't vegan that you have to make sure, like you, if you are getting an Impossible Whopper, that it's all vegan products. I guess. Yeah, that's very interesting because obviously it does automatically come with mayo and ketchup. Oh, I don't know if ketchup has anything or whatever, but right. mayo for sure does. Yeah. And so I wonder if it's just not advertised as vegan. It's just kind of like, do you want to try this kind of thing? Yeah. And yes, it is cooked on the same flat top because that we're not advertising that it's vegan or right. whatever. So maybe that lawsuit will go the opposite way and it'll be fine. But We'll have to see. I mean, I personally didn't see it advertised as vegan. But I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, that kind of, I think that kind of sums up our whole Impossible Burger experience. But I want to say I've also seen a lot of places coming out with their own version of Impossible Meat or other other products, I guess, that aren't necessarily like a burger. So we found an article that showed a lot of fast food chains are kind of jumping on this bandwagon and says plant-based meat is conquering fast food and it lists all of these companies that are giving their own version of plant-based meat and it includes places like McDonald's, Burger King obviously, let's see what else. A&W, we don't have one of those near us but (laughs) I wish we did. (laughs) Red Robin does. TGI Fridays. There's literally so many on this list. That's right. I Carl's Jr. did jump on the Impossible Meat bandwagon. Mm-hmm. I just saw that recently. Cheesecake Factory, apparently. I wonder if that would taste any better than a Burger King. Um, that would be interesting. Comment if you want to see that. <laughs> we could go to Denny's. Apparently they have Impossible Meat. I don't know how I feel about that. Blaze Pizza. I feel like I would not honestly be able to tell fake meat on a pizza because it's already like it has so much going on already that I mean, whenever I taste like a pepperoni pizza, for example, like, you know, it's a pepperoni pizza, but you're more tasting like the marinara and the mozzarella and like the the crust or whatever. I feel like if it was like a fake pepperoni that tasted like pepperoni, I might be able to not know. That's a good point. But so a lot of people are jumping on this bandwagon. Again, I think it's great. I think the product offerings are more product offerings, the better. It's more inclusive. I understand. Mm -hmm. But I'm probably going to stick with my (laughs) meat options. Mm -hmm. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah. Hashtag sorry, not sorry. Okay. So we kind of wanted to stick with the 
plant-based impossible meat theme in our last segment. And we had the idea of doing a what's in my mouth challenge. So basically how this is going to work, we picked out two products each and the other one doesn't know, like, I don't know what Steph got. Steph doesn't know what I got. And we are going to blindfold the other person and make them try whatever it is we got. You have to guess or at least try to guess what the product is supposed to be, like what it's imitating, and then give your thoughts. So I don't know. Are you going to try the products that you got for me as well? Yes, I but I obviously that. would know like what it is. Yes. We can like you can taste it and then you kind of say what it is and then I can try it and we can just kind of like say our reviews of that, I guess, as well. Yeah. So Okay. Good to know. I'm excited, but also a little nervous. <laughs> I'm I'm excited. I tried to pick foods that were maybe not what you'd expect. Yep. Um I did too. I think I got some good ones. I just hope they're not gross. Like, I didn't try to completely <laughs> sabotage you and be like, oh, she's going to hate this pig. <laughs> but I I found some good ones that I was like, I didn't even know that they make this plant-based. Yeah. So I'm also, I think that there is a chance that we possibly got each other. Like, I feel like it just in my soul, we had to have gotten each other. I don't something think so. Similar. I mean, there were literally so many products. Like, the entire, one entire like freezer section uh, freezer aisle <laughs> was completely consumed with meatless plant-based products so i don't think so i mean if i'll be very surprised if we got the same if we got the same thing out well, of everything there we'll just have to see who's first i'm first eating products you got yeah so okay. get your blindfolds ready <laughs> and we'll see if you win or Let's do it. It's a competition all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> we love a competition. All right, guys. So we are back. I have the food ready for Alex to try. Um, I'm going to be doing two food items, and she's going to guess what the meat is supposed to be in those food items. As you see, she is blindfolded. <laughs> I literally can't see anything. I don't even know if I'm speaking into the mic correctly, but whatever. We'll so, roll with it. This is going to be her first Item. Do you, you keep putting it closer to my face because no. I get like smells? No. Lift out your hand and grab the fork like that. <laughs> I'm so scared. I'm gonna show the people what it is. Um, you can go ahead and try. You have to guess what it is. I don't know if I'm blowing on it. That one should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> A chicken nugget? Just a chicken nugget? Is that your final decision? Mm hmm. It doesn't taste like anything crazy. I can definitely tell it's like a breaded piece of chicken, but the consistency is like a little bit weird. <laughs> like normal chicken is kind of stringy, or normal chicken nugget is kind of like stringy or. Tastes like ground chicken. Mm-hmm. That that tasted pretty bland with a little bit of spice. Like, I can tell it's supposed to have some sort of spice. You no? were right about it being chicken. Um, specifically, it is buffalo chicken wing. Oh. Does it taste like buffalo at all? No. Interesting. Not really. I'll take the fork back. <laughs> now, this one's going to be a little bit interesting. <laughs> I'm scared. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. Hold on. It's about to fall. Okay. Here you go. It made... Oh. What is this? It's a dripping. <laughs> it's a dripping. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it should be fine, but maybe blow on it. I don't know. I can't tell if I'm actually blowing up. This is what this one is, friends. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza? Is that your final decision? Mmm. It tastes like a like a barbecue pizza. But what's the meat that's it that it's um imitating? Uh barbecue chicken pizza? 
I'm you sorry. are right about barbecue, but it's Aloha barbecue quesadilla, and it is technically plant-based oh. barbecue savory grounds. Yeah, you can take off your... Savory grounds? What is that supposed to be? <laughs> I don't know. I thought that was funny whenever I was making it or, like, preparing it. It's because it said plant-based barbecue savory grounds, and, like, the little picture on it. Almost, maybe, like, ground beef? I don't know what it means. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be ground beef. I didn't taste, literally, okay, on this package, it has, I can barely see from the blindfold, packed with flavor-rich ingredients, sweet pineapple, jalapeno peppers, pinto beans, and red onion. I tasted none of that. You just tasted barbecue? Yeah. Interesting. I do want to taste the buffalo wing because I'm very curious. It almost does look like chicken, though, like the basic chicken nuggets you would get in, like, the freezer aisle. It looks and feels like it, like pretty pretty springy. But okay, this is a common problem I have with any chicken nugget. What the heck is this shape? <laughs> like someone explained, it looks like a bowling pin, like a chubby bowling pin, mm-hmm. or like a mock drumstick. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what they were trying to get at with like the wings. oh. I guess that makes more, more sense. Yes. It tastes like... Do you get what I'm saying, though? It tastes like a spicy chicken nugget. I'm a fan of the spicy taste, but it does not taste like buffalo. It doesn't taste like buffalo. Um, the flavor itself is very bland, but it tastes just like a processed chicken nugget. Yeah. So pretty similar to, I'm interested I guess. to see the inside. Explain I mean, it looks like a chicken nugget. It, yeah, it looks like a... Like a frozen chicken nugget specifically. Honestly, I probably, I didn't really notice the difference. Yeah. <laughs> that was interesting. Okay. All right. All right. Now it's my turn. Yes. I have some good items, and I don't know how you're going to feel. <laughs> I'm <laughs> scared now. <laughs> but it's going to be a good time, so let me go prepare those, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back with two products that I think are going to be really interesting for Steph to try. How, how are you feeling, Steph? Are you worried? I'm really worried because I think I went a little bit more of the simple route, and I feel like you are going to be a little trickster on me, and I'm not. I'm, it's going to just be weird, so I'm kind of scared, but I'm ready. Okay, so I'm thinking, let me try this one first. It's going to be... A little more messy, I would say. So. Oh, I hear a little. (laughs) Okay, okay, okay. I'm trying to get this perfectly. Okay. If it's something cheesy, that it's going to be, like, kind of fun because it's vegan, right? Okay, let's see. Is it hot? I don't think so. (laughs) I don't know where it is. (laughs) weird should i get a napkin are you good i think i'm good okay okay it's obviously spaghetti (laughs) but is it like ground beef like is it supposed to be like a ground beef spaghetti because it tastes Mm. just like regular spaghetti it's spaghetti and meatballs. Okay. Were the meatballs, like, chopped up? No, yeah, like, part of the meatball on the end. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Was it good? Oh, I thought you meant, like, still on the oh. end. <laughs> <laughs> I went for it. Um, yeah, so, like, I wasn't wrong. <laughs> no, you weren't wrong. That's really kind of crazy. It's... It tastes just like... Just regular spaghetti, to be honest. So it's um, Amy's Light and Lean Spaghetti Italiano, plant-based with meatless meatballs with organic pasta and veggies. Yeah, I mean, it did taste like a spaghetti that had, like, vegetables in it. Um, It does. It has broccoli. Yeah, I mean, it was really good. It tastes like regular. It didn't taste like meatless. Oh. (laughs) Oh. Oh. I don't want the the marinara sauce to, like, ruin this. Maybe I should have done the other one first. Is there marinara in the second one? No. Oh. 
I don't know how to hold it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to feel about this one. I'm scared. Is it seafood? No. <laughs> I'm going to preface this with she doesn't like seafood. Oh. Corn dog. Yeah. Just by the smell. Really? Mm. Wow. Yeah, it actually does. Taste, it smells like a corn dog. It tastes like a corn dog. Like 100%. You can take your blindfold off now. I'm scared to see what that looks like. Oh. Wow, I'm like really impressed. They both, did you taste the spaghetti? No, not yet. It tastes, oh, you can use this if you want. I don't know. Um, the corn dog tastes exactly like a corn dog, like regular. And that tastes exactly like, <laughs> it tastes like yeah. real meat. That's so odd. Yeah, but I mean, the breading on the corn dog tastes exactly like regular breading on a corn dog. Like, that was crazy. I want to know if this is made with like beans or something, like the meatballs. Mm -hmm. Because the consistency is a lot like regular um, yeah. ground beef. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Where's those were shocked. interesting? Like I am really shocked. Like the corn dog, I thought was gonna be gross. <laughs> I almost got a corn dog too. That is crazy. Like, I saw the corn dogs in the store, and I was like, oh, yeah. I'm oh, getting yeah. that. I mean, seriously, I could not taste the difference, especially in the corn dog. It is really similar. Like, it smells like it. Like, it tastes like it a... It smells like a legit hot dog, mm -hmm. which is weird. It looks like it, too. Yeah. But hot dogs are already kind of iffy. <laughs> <That's> so true. <laughs> They're like a mix of whatever. Like, does anybody really know, like, what that is? But I don't think so. Anyways... All of them, I was pleasantly surprised. Like, I think out of all of them, I would probably <laughs> eat the corn dog. Like, if I had to choose out of all four, mm -hmm. I would eat the corn dog the most. If it is, like, a healthier thing or if you're trying to have, like, like a meatless Monday lunch or, like, if you want to make it a point to maybe, like, work that into your diet, I mean, this stuff is amazing. I'm very impressed. 68% less fat. Than regular frozen corn dogs. It's 140 wow. calories per corn dog. I mean, I don't see why. I don't know what the price difference was. I know that you can get like a huge pack of corn dogs wherever. That's true. Um, but if you you kind of had like corn dogs a lot for your family or whatever, and you wanted to make a healthier option or a meatless option, I mean, that's a really good, really good little thing. Honestly, like throughout this entire episode, like my, I'm, I've been pleasantly surprised. Which I think is is a big deal because before this, I didn't really eat, like, any meatless products. Usually if I eat, like, a meatless meal, it's, I don't know, something where I still get protein, but it's whole foods. Like, it's not, it's not something that I normally eat or would normally eat, like, spaghetti and meatballs mm -hmm. that I'm substituting with something pretending to be spaghetti yeah. and meatballs, you know? Not pretending, but that's the best <laughs> word I can Imitating. think of Imitating. Imitating, there you go. But I think with all of these, I'm I'm surprised, for I'm sure. I'm very surprised. And I think it's really cool. I mean, I've never tried anything meatless before um, other than, like, a veggie burger, but yeah. those have been around forever, and I feel like those don't, like, try to replace the flavor of meat. You just know what you're getting into when you, when you eat a veggie burger. Right. Um, I would probably go this route more than the Impossible Burger route, yeah. um, just kind of comparing those two, but... Because that, I felt like, tasted more out there than any of this. Like, this actually yeah, tastes like what it's trying to be, in my opinion. I think that about sums up the entire episode. I mean, we're ending on a on a high note. In closing, guys, make sure you follow chat to review on Instagram to stay up to date with the latest news, reviews, and more. We are now on Anchor, Spotify, Break, and Radio Public. Don't forget to like, follow, and share to all your friends. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. Bye. Bye.